think one thing I would say um, in general is the, the whether you're talking about Xylem or whether you're talking about beta manning, they can use very strong anti-nutritive factor in the bird, right? So we cannot we cannot underestimate the effect that it has in young birds because um, they they reduce nutrient digestion and they induce a lot of um, immune activation, especially beta manning. Uh, the, 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 there are quite a few mechanisms of action that you know that beta manganese have when you when you use them. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, effect on viscosity. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, where we bring you the latest in poultry nutrition and research industry trends. Uh, in approximately uh, 10 minutes. Uh, my name is Sam Roach. I'm one of the hosts of the show and associate professor of poultry nutrition at Auburn University. And today, uh, joined by Dr. Uh, Bios Kali, uh, who is uh, uh, joining us from the Texas area. Um, he's a, a graduate of Mississippi State University, a PhD in poultry science, and then uh, has been several years in the allied industry, different capacities, and currently a technical lead at, at BASF working uh, with feed additives and enzymes. So, Bio, great to talk with you today and uh, uh, happy to learn from you. Nice to see you again, Sam. Uh, I admire your work and the background for a long time, so it's great to finally uh, be able to speak together here. Well, great. Yeah, no, I, I look forward to it as well. So, uh, you know, you've worked in, in the area of enzymes recently. Um, I, I know you had a, a podcast not too long ago uh, talking about phytase and uh, you know, learned a lot through that. And uh, today we're going to talk a little bit different substrate and different uh, enzyme uh, in the category of the beta mananases. So uh, can you just talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, the importance, the substrates and, and, and how these are applied in poultry diets? Yeah, good, good. That's a good question. So when we think about enzyme technology, um, for me, the question is not why, right? Because we know that enzymes are important. Um, they help to improve the nutritive value of the feed, for example. Um, it, it's more of what enzyme are we talking about? What enzyme should we be putting in the, in the toolbox that can really help um, birds and producers in general, right? And we've seen a lot of, you know, progress within the phytase and, of course, the NSP. So, um, when we think about NSP, we know that NSP, uh, non-cyclosaccharide, influences nutrient digestion. Uh, and not only that, it also can impact uh, gut dynamics, right? Um, and, and we know this because we know NSP enzymes, whether you're talking about xylenases or even today we're talking about mananases, um, they, they have functional benefit beyond those digestion. So, so we know that non cyclodisaccharides can influence nutrient digestion and can also influence um, gut, the gut dynamics in general. Um, and within the uh, hemicellulose uh, category, right, uh, xylen seems to be the most popular within console diets. Let's just take the general diet that we use mostly in the U.S. Second to that is actually manage. And so it becomes quite important to think about beta mananase as an enzyme that can help to hydrolyze uh, uh, hemicellulose in general, right? Uh, and makes it quite an important enzyme within the toolbox when you think about console diet in general, because that's where you get a lot of the substrate. Um, I am, I'm talking about, you know, in general terms, console diets that we use in the U.S. So that would be that would so be meal would be kind of the next the next uh, ingredient that we would need an enzyme to kind of break fibrinolize the heavy cellulose uh, uh, fiber in there. It's not only in in, in soybean meal. Um, uh, we will consider things like uh, ingredients such as pumpkin meal, um, maybe more like an alternative ingredient. We don't quite use much of that in the U.S., but, but in Asia, they do use a lot of that. Um, Goa meal is another one that is very high in beta mines. Um, and it has to give you relative value. So, pumpkin oil meal, for example, we have about 37% beta mine, right? Um, relative, in comparison, serving meal will have about 2% um, beta mine, right? Now, there's some work that has actually been done 
um, where it shows that if you take a purified vitamin, for example, and you induce the bird with, with a purified vitamin, you probably only need about 0.05% to induce in the immune response in those birds. So, so as a matter of fact, when you think about, you know, from kind of it has about 37, but when you put in the dyes, you're only being there in a very small amount. But soybean meat has about 2%. But you're about 35% soybean meal in the diet. So in general, it becomes quite an important um, uh, uh, ingredient to think about when it comes to the amount of substrate that you can actually put in the diet. And so, you know, we talk about consul a, a lot, and I'll, I'll probably talk about this um, as it relates to where we see more of the sensitivity to vitamin in this, in this poultry species. Um, maybe much later, but overall, there is that um, substrate uh, within the diet that we also need to think about, and birds will uh, respond to it in different ways. With science led solutions that are sustainable, proven, and effective, BASF helps you tackle the challenges of poultry nutrition. We offer high quality feed ingredients that enable a more sustainable production and help you achieve your animal performance targets. We call it the science of sustainable feed that succeeds. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I would think this is pretty timely right now, too. We know that, you know, soybean meal prices are, are pretty low, uh, lower than we, we've really seen in a while. So, you know, that makes soybean meal probably pretty attractive. And, and certainly that's going to impact the substrate for these enzymes, too. Yeah, and the quality of soybean meal, too, plays a whole uh, role here. Um, we've seen sort of a, a, a correlation between low quality soybean meal with high beta amount of levels, right? And, so, I mean, we talked about quality a lot in the U.S., but okay, maybe there is, there's not a big issue there. Um, I think with more production coming on screen, there's probably going to be a little bit of quality issue that we might be thinking about there. And, you know, 45%, 46% food potential of meal, they have higher beta amount of concentration than the 48% sort of meal. So when you, when you now add that into the diet, uh, you know, especially in Turkey, where you're using close to 50%. In, in phase one diet, phase two diets, um, and they are pretty, turkeys, young turkeys especially, are very sensitive mm -hmm. to that. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, when you put all that together, um, then the, the substrate is there for the enzyme to, to really be able to hydrolyze that in the cellulose and, and be able to benefit the bird. Good. Well, now I'll ask, you know, the hard question. Um, I, I mean, I think when we compare with uh, like phytase, and again, phytate, can be very complex and different phytases work differently. Uh, but the, at the end of the day, you know, the substrate is, is a, is a lot more, is, is much more simpler, right. And, and straightforward than when we talk about NSPases and it's like, okay, is the beta, uh, beta mannanase affected by uh, simultaneous in inclusion of the xylanase or another carbohydrates. And so it gets very complex. So, uh, you know, how can we effectively use a beta mannanase and, and, you know, can you give us any, at least philosophy, maybe not details, or maybe you do want to give details on uh, matrix values and just kind of how we work through that. Um, one of the things that we have done is to really do a lot of vegetative studies and looking at what particular nutrients can we really rely on when it comes to the utilization of mannanase in the diet. And we see quite an impact on amino acid digestibility. Um, yeah, o over the six, seven, eight different trials that we've done, we see up to about 3% improvement in amino acid digestibility. And when you think about it, it does make sense because uh, beta mannan does not only act on the cell wall, it also acts within the interstitial spaces of the cell wall. So you're really getting a lot of those, this cage effect that we normally talk about when it comes to NSD, you're really getting those nutrients really available to the bird. So that would be another way we look at this um, in terms of utilizing this matrix. Now, there is, there is you, you, you're right there, there's phytase, there's xylanase, which is commonly used. Phytase is about 100%. You know, everybody's using the xylanase. It's about 80 to 90%, depending on the quality of the pond that you're using. What is the relevant of a thought enzyme? And we know that through enzyme kinetics, Enzyme effect or responses are never additive, right? It's almost like you get 100% from the first enzyme. The second enzyme will probably give you about, you know, 
30 percent, you know, maybe 33 percent. By the time you're getting to the third enzyme, your response rate is definitely slow, right? So we've done a lot of work to see, okay, how can we apply all three enzymes coming out with certain metric value, improving the nutritive value of the feed, and returning the birds to their performance while keeping uh, cost low, right? While keeping the cost really low. And we've, you know, we've developed different metric values um, when, with different combinations, only with phytase or phytase with nitrogen. So with, with uh, and we've seen, we've seen, we run, we develop the, the, the matrix through digestibility studies, and then we validate the matrix, right? So we, we, we just don't throw numbers out there. We validate the matrix that we bring, we bring to the market. Better managers does have functional benefit as well, and um, that's one area that we've seen that would actually also help. The other area that we've also looked at, and you know, also is in lean hands, right? Lean hands are long give. Um, you have to think about what phase can this enzyme actually support. We see that in young lean hands, they're really sensitive to beta manage as well. This is this is one area. And um, in, in older lean hands as well. Uh, so if we ran a trial with uh, uh, Dr. Kiari at the University of Guam, these birds went from 60 to 80 weeks. Even at 80 weeks, they were still about 90% production, um, uh, NGA production. So, so, and we saw a lot of uh, effect on lipid metabolism, calcium metabolism. Um, so, yeah, so there is some effect of mayonnaise also in, in lean hands, more in the younger birds and the older birds and right in the middle of the, of the cycle. So, so, in general, there is a, there, there's room for the enzyme, right? Um, whether as a third enzyme to improve nutritive value, improve nutrient digestion, or just on the only known on the functional benefit that it also provide in young birds, for example. No, absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you, you know, I, I fully agree, especially around these effects of the soybean milk. You know, we, we continue to see uh, some advantages uh, when we, you know, try to attack that with different technologies, you know, whether it's changing the soybean milk levels. And so... Uh, and, and to me, I, I do believe in the the fact that, you know, these manage probably are, are certainly causing a real cost to the bird from the, you know, immune side, uh, innate immunity and, and just inflammation and overall. So um, I think that's a that's a big point that's, you know, specific to the beta mananase that, uh, you know, we may not get with the other enzymes. So um, I think it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, no, it's a it's a complex. I mean, like I said, when you start looking at these NSPs and all the potential interactions, very complex with these substrates. So, yeah, I appreciate your your systematic approach and in, in working this out. I'm sure your your customers appreciate it as well. So, well, we appreciate your insights and, and uh, learned a lot. I'm certainly a lot of takeaways for for our listeners on this. So, thank you again. Absolutely, thank you. Nice to see you again, son. Good to see you, and uh, thanks to everyone for listening to another episode of the Poultry Nutrition Flat Belt Podcast. Uh, if you enjoyed this one, uh, please like and subscribe and make sure you catch the next one. Uh, and until then, uh, this is Sam Rochel signing off. Thank you.